Uh, she's a principal. She's in school right now. She's very busy. Um, but she's Joe's mom. So first off, thank you, Miss Robin, for your time. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, and thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. Um, very nice to speak with you. Nice so, meeting you Saturday night as well. I was the awkward guy in the Hawaiian shirt and the man bun. Absolutely. I, I definitely <laughs> remember you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Um, so, Miss Robin, <laughs> it's an aggressive look. So you, you've been to every game. Last year, Coach had to stay back, and he was a defensive coordinator with Ohio. He made a couple of games, and he talked to us about how brutal that was and how fantastic this year has been. Take me through the entire journey. You've been there since day one. You've made every trip to Baton Rouge and road game that he's played. Uh, and to now see him finish up as to where he stands right now is the best player in the game, and it's not even close. Uh, what's your point of view? Well, um, I certainly ap appreciate the fact that I was able to come to every single game. Uh, you know, it was a little bit complicated traveling uh, by myself last year. I was very, very happy that uh, Joe's, one of Joe's older brothers, Dan, he lives in Houston, and he traveled to almost every game with me. We usually met up in whatever city, wherever the game was, which was great to have him there. Um, and you know, I, for the most part, would work the whole day on Friday and then catch a flight to you know either New Orleans or wherever the game was, um, go to the game, and then hop back on a plane on Sunday afternoon. So it, I was happy that I could be there. And, um, gosh, Tiger Stadium is an amazing place. And um, we're, we're excited that Joe's had that opportunity. So take me to Saturday and, and just the emotions of that. I've been watching football in that stadium for over 30 years. I, I'm, that's about as a special a moment that I've ever seen that place produce, um, and it'll live on forever when he was introduced before before the game. Um, what were the emotions like at that point? You know, I feel like it was kind of an out, kind of like an outer body yeah. experience. You know, I mean, it was just so surreal. Um, leading up to that moment, it was I was kind of emotional, but once Joe came running out, and oh my goodness, the crowd was. It was such a warm welcome, and it was really overwhelming. We're, we are um, just so happy that he's been able to experience that kind of a once-in-a-lifetime moment and um, so appreciative to the fans. It's just been unbelievable. Yeah, and, and so there was the pregame moment. There was calling time out to let him leave with a standing ovation on the field after the game, even into the locker room after the game. Um, and so e even outside of that first moment, like what, 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 what was that entire night? Uh, what, what was that like? How, how did you keep your emotions in check? Like I was actually pretty shocked at how stoic everybody seemed to be in the heart of it. I was crying. <laughs> well, I think that, um, well, when they took him out of the game, it actually took me by surprise just a little bit. I thought he might be in for a couple more plays. And so, um, it, took me a little a little time to get my mind wrapped around that and you know again the crowd was so overwhelmingly uh, appreciative and gave him so much respect that you know, I don't know it was just you know it's kind of numbing I guess almost yeah it's overwhelming and, yeah really overwhelming it in a good way obviously but um you know we're just again we're so happy and appreciative that it's been such a positive experience for him because the whole transfer process was uh, from the very beginning was, you know, it's, it's a little unnerving to make that big of a move and move that far away. And um, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. I was going to ask you about th that process because I'm listening to the audible version of that's Joe, that Cody Worsham and the digital team of LSU sports has put out and they did a fantastic job of just kind of, documenting where Joe has come from to where he is now. Um, and it seems like he's kind of always been the alpha on his team, whether he was changing plays in sixth grade for the Little League team or whether you were driving him from a passing camp at Ohio State to a AAU basketball game in the middle of the summer where he just stepped into the starting lineup. Did, did you what, what, what was the, the, the parental fear of him leaving home and going to LSU with him having so much success as an athlete but, but not doing it I guess out of your guys, out of you guys' vision, out out of the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I think that Jimmy and I both felt we've always felt so confident in Joe um, that 
we really just wanted him to have get an honest opportunity to play. And we felt like after our visit to LSU that he was going to be given that opportunity as long as he was good enough, you know. And um, we knew that it, nothing was guaranteed. Joe knew that, but he was ready to go to work and um, try to win that spot. And once they got into fall camp, then that all ended up working out. And certainly we wish that it was closer to home because the travel um, has been a lot. But at the same time, I think that he is absolutely 100% in the place that he was always maybe supposed to be, you know, and yeah. it's just been a such a wonderful experience. Robin, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll live on. Like not not only in this, this it's immortal in in the program, like in the state, he is he is an adopted son of the state of Louisiana. Yeah. I mean, the, the the way that he could run for governor right now and, and win in a landslide. <laughs> that's, what, that's what somebody said the other day. And I was laughing. They was like, he could stage a coup and just straight no up take over the state I mean, if he, he wanted it. to. So, elect so him we, right now. We, we've opened up. We have a we have a, a yes. Huddle. We're we're putting Principal Burrow to the test here. We've had a hud- we, we have a huddle device which allows our listeners to interact with us, and we ask them to get some questions inside of that that they wanted to ask you. Uh, which is, okay. could be dangerous, but what we've, yeah. we've filtered them. We've vetted them a little bit. And gone okay. through them. Uh, so here's the first one. Did you teach Joe the pageant wave? <laughs> I did not. I, I think that he must have some other uh, <laughs> female influence in his life that gave him that. I, I do not have any experience with a pageant wave. <laughs> Better game day atmosphere, Ohio State or LSU tailgating? Oh, LSU. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Uh, uh, best tailgating food y'all have tried this year, not common to Ohio. And he goes on to list boudin, crawfish, gumbo, jambalaya. Oh. What's been your favorite? Oh, my gosh. I love all of it. Um, I think the best food, well, first of all, our tailgate, we always have uh, catered through Rouse's. And they do oh. such a great job. Love, 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 love their uh, boudin balls. Love yep. their jambalaya. Love their gumbo. But... Um, and I wish I could remember the name of the guy that was catering a, a place next to us. He did um, some, uh, oh, it was crawfish. A uh With grits. Oh. Um, Does that sound Like right? shrimp and grits? A little shrimp and grits. Shrimp and yeah, grits. Yeah, yeah. It's, also, it's good in that's, there. That's what it was, shrimp and grits. It's another dish right As you can, you can tell, I'm not very well it's versed good. on exactly. Robin, on we love you it. too. You're an adopted mom <laughs> from the state of Louisiana. You have, you have no no worries of stepping out of bounds. Uh, next question. Is it true Joe, Joe was born in a manger because there was no room at the end? <laughs> Is that, uh, can you confirm this? Principal that, Burrow. That is false news. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I thought for sure it would have been true. What about the Burrow jersey? Where, where? So this is a question from a listener. Where is the Burrow jersey? Where is the, the one that he came out for senior night? Well, you know what? As far as I know, it is still at the equipment room at LSU. I was hoping we could get our hands on it and bring it home with us yes. just yeah. so I knew where it was. Put that in the mail, G-string. It, uh, pardon me? No, it's not Greg Stringfellow. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Greg Stringfellow. <laughs> Greg Stringfellow is the equipment coach, and I was telling him to put that in the mail, and his nickname is G-String. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, you got hit with the pardon me, son. By the principal. You were in trouble. I felt like I was in the principal's you office. You scared me. <laughs> me too. You scared me. <laughs> um, all right. Um, by the way, the NCAA is probably going to make them buy that jersey, too. I don't, I don't think you get it for free. Uh, uh, wow. What, what's been your organ dial back in here? What's been your favorite part outside of the, you know, just a football experience about South Louisiana, kind of getting to know this new culture? My goodness, everyone is just so nice and welcoming. And, um, you know, we've just, it just feels like the entire stadium, the entire state has embraced Joe and um, our family. And, you know, it feels, we feel at home. We feel at home. Um, I'm going to play you a clip from the head coach. He stopped by at 7.30 this morning, and we told him that you guys, obviously that Jimmy was going to be here at 8 a.m. and that you were stopping by at 8.15, and we asked him about the relationship uh, between the head coach and, and you guys, and here's what he said. Well, um, I feel that we're friends. Uh, I'm very appreciative that they trusted us. Uh, obviously, they had to take a leap of faith. They are great people. They are great parents. 
uh, remind me of our parents. I mean, they, they raised some great sons. Uh, they love their boy, and I think this has been a great year for, for them. It's been a win-win situation for everybody. You hear that, and what's your reaction? Well, I definitely think it's been a win-win situation. And, you know, as far as being great parents, I don't think that we did anything unusual at all other than just, you know, loving Joe with all of our heart and unconditionally, no matter what happened. And, um, you know, we always kept his best interests in the forefront of everything that we've done. And, you know, I think that that's what most all parents do. So, you know, there's there's no magic to it. It's, it's just do the best you can and, um, you know, push your kiddos to to do their best and keep your expectations high. Last question from a listener and we'll get you out of here. I know you got to get back to work. How do you feel? No. How do you feel knowing that there will be a statue of your son on LSU's campus forever? Oh my goodness. That is just unbelievable to think about to me. You know, I mean, what a blessing. And I, I, I don't have words for it. It's overwhelming to think about. And, you know, we're just really, Looking forward to these next three weeks to enjoy every last moment that we can with LSU football. And, uh, you know, I told Jimmy last weekend, I said, you know, I don't know that I can go cold turkey on not coming to any LSU games (laughs) next year. We might have to ease out of this a little bit. So we might have to keep some travel money in the budget, honey. Well, (laughs) I I, I imagine that the uh, the bank account is going to go up a a lot for the Burroughs next year with the uh, the draft status of your son. This was great. I'm sorry for the awkward parts. Um, (laughs) But this was fantastic. Thank you for your time this morning, Miss Robin. Absolutely. Thank you guys for calling.